the graphic that you and I are both witnessing to my right is probably an extraordinary oversimplification of incredible research brought to us from Oregon Health and Science University. Now, the interesting part about that is that this mass chemical screening of particular plant compounds that could interfere with the SARS-CoV-2 binding to the ACE2. And what they discovered was two compounds found in hemp, the plant itself. Now, I want to emphasize these are the acids. They are the precursor. Cannabigorolic acid and cannabidiolic acid. The precursors to CBD and CBG. So these are the acid parts, not the actual end product, CBD or CBG. So keep that in mind. But they found out these two compounds don't necessarily affect the immune system in an immunological way as far as inhibiting SARS-CoV-2 binding to the ACE2. They just work mechanistically, which really makes it quite intriguing because it's something which you don't think about as far as, you know, you hear vaccines, your prophylactics, your immune stimulation, antibodies, so on and so forth. You don't just hear something that works like basically in a very, very simplistic, uh, simplistic, simplistic, uh, simplistic fashion, like glue. So to proceed as follows, let us begin. Oregon State research shows hemp compounds prevent coronavirus from entering human cells. Van Bremen and collaborators, including scientists at Oregon Health and Science University, found that a pair of cannabinoid acids bind to the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein blocking a critical step in the process the virus uses to infect people. So the cannabinoid acids, the acids, that's why it's got to be the acid and not CBD or CBG. It's got to be the acid part. The cannabinoid acids bind to the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein, which blocks a critical step in the process the virus uses to infect people. The compounds are cannabigorolic acid, or CBGA, and cannabidiolic acid, CBDA. And the spike protein is the same drug target used in COVID-19 vaccines and antibody therapy. A drug target is any molecule critical to the process the disease follows, meaning its disruption can thwart infection or disease progression. And I'm quoting now. These cannabinoid acids are abundant in hemp and many hemp extracts. They are not controlled substances like THC, the psychoactive ingredient to marijuana, and have a good safety profile in humans. And our research showed, obviously I'm quoting, that hemp compounds were equally effective against the variants SARS-CoV-2, including the B117, first detected in the United Kingdom, and B1351, first detected in South Africa. So looking at alpha and beta. Now you look at the mechanistic way it's uh, working, uh, that's probably why it worked equally. Now the question is, will it have the same impact on Delta uh, Omicron? I don't want to add any publisher bias, but it would be nice to be able to look into that since that is the variant of the day. Any part of the infection and replication cycle is a potential target for antiviral intervention. And the connection of the spike protein's receptor binding domain to the human cell surface receptor ACE2 is a critical step in that cycle. That means cell entry inhibitors like the acids from hemp could be used to prevent SARS-CoV-2 infection. I am just quoting the research. And also the short infections by preventing virus particles from infecting human cells. They bind to the spike proteins. So the proteins can't bind to the ACE2 enzyme, which is abundant on the outer membrane of the endothelial cells, endothelial cells, and lungs and other organs. So what's I'm trying to say? It's almost mechanistic in its approach, not to oversimplify it, but that's what makes it so amazing. So let's say, for example, it's incorporated in the future speculation, you know, conjecture, and people are immunocompromised. Something like this that has a mechanistic approach Let's say if it's incorporated into a nasal spray, throat spray, where a lot of those, that binding takes place, wow, that would be just freaking incredible. So you can see its application in a wide range of arenas outside of being a very, very readily available substance throughout most of the world, which could usually be incorporated, especially in populations not privy to inoculation, other prophylactics or antibody therapies and so on and so forth. You know what I mean? To proceed. These compounds can be taken orally and have a long history of safe use in humans, Van Bremen said. They have the potential to prevent as well as treat infection by SARS-CoV-2, CBDA, and CBGA, again, to emphasize, are produced by the hemp plant as precursors, 
precursors to CBD and CBG, which are familiar to many consumers. However, they are different from the acids and not contained in hemp products. I shouldn't make it say like all because I don't know. I don't know if he knows, but at least at this point in time, the researcher says they're not aware of it in any hemp products, even though it could be in hemp raw. So to proceed, one of the primary concerns in this pen, that's adding publisher bias, so I don't want to get into what they're headed with they're thinking. One of the primary concerns of the pandemic is the spread of the variants, of which there are many, and B117 and B135 are among the most widespread and concerning. At what time? These, because the field changes. These variants are well known for evading antibodies against early lineage SARS CoV 2, i.e., D614G, uh, which is obviously, if you can find it anywhere now, was obviously concerning given the current vaccination strategy to rely on early lineage spike protein as an antigen. Our data show that CBDA and CBGA are effective against the two variants we looked at, and we hope that trend will extend to other existing and future variants without mentioning Delta Omicron and who knows, Zuocon towards the end, 10 years from now. You see what I mean? To proceed. Van Bremen said resistant viruses could still arise amid widespread use of cannabinoids, which is covered, but the combination of vaccination, if you're into that, and CBDA and CBGA treatment should make a much more challenging environment for SARS-CoV-2. Of course, it'd be kind of cool if you just had to do the hemp. You know what I mean? Not make any recommendations, but you get the picture. Uh, or if it's incorporated into a diet. Like, oh my gosh, coronavirus outbreak. Here, let's have some hemp seeds on my salad. Wouldn't it be cool if it was that simple? Proceed. Now, this is interesting, too. Because all the money being thrown around this pandemic, all these incredible, incredible breakthroughs into plant compounds, you think research funding would be a priority. So let's end and include with this one paragraph. Our earlier research report on discovery, because a lot of you mentioned licorice as well. This is where it comes from. One of them. Our earlier research reported on the discovery of another compound, one from licorice, that binds the spike protein as well. However, we did not test that compound, the calicone A, for activity against the live virus yet. We need funding for that. So you get the idea. You know, trillions and trillions and trillions spent. It'd be really, really cool if basically more of this research was uh, into prophylactic strategies which could make people feel safe under any circumstance or political ideology. But I'm not going to add that too much. But however, though, just the same, incredible, incredible gratitude to the researchers. Hemp looks like a very, very, very promising strategy for uh, in the future if the research pans out in basically animal trials and human trials. But regardless of that, this is just incredible. This is the research that really needs to be done because it's cheap and readily available. And even if not as effective as other prophylactics, or let's say, for example, inoculation strategies, any reduction on a global scale is saving lives. It's a reduction that basically benefit all of us in regard to ending these particular waves of pandemics for however how long they may last. But still, just the same, gratitude to the researchers i am humbled that you watch also too to reiterate it is cannabinoid cannabigorolic acid and cannabidiolic diolic acid cbga and cbda acronyms which work a lot better than my pronunciation but again gratitude thank you and I look forward to you all once again next week catch you then